Hello and welcome to another Passive Life video. So this is just a quick video to go over some recent solo electric vehicle news because a lot has happened in the past couple of weeks. Firstly, Aptera just signed several supply agreements with Red Viking to supply AGVs for their production line. Now I saw a lot of confusion and buzz online about what exactly this means, but it's actually not that complicated. To clear up any confusion, Red Viking are not producing the Aptera. They are simply helping to supply production utilities. In this case, they're supplying the AGVs, which are the little robots that you can see in this picture. They can carry reasonably heavy objects on a programmable route, a bit like a smart and adaptable conveyor belt. Optera have their new production facility that they are currently gearing up for production and Red Viking are supplying some of this logistical hardware. The reference in the Aptera article to Industry 4.0 is basically an industry buzzword for the integration of smart objects, big data and AI into the production line. It's nothing new, but like all technology, it is improving and Red Viking seems to be one of the companies pushing these technological developments forward. As with any production line, Industry 4.0 production lines are all about reducing waste, increasing speed, reducing costs, and generally producing everything in a more efficient manner. What is especially exciting about this development is the potential flexibility that things like AGVs bring to startups. From a manufacturing point of view, these are very valuable objects. If you think back to the production of the Tesla Model 3, even with years of experience under their belt, Tesla struggled to make their production plans work. And this was in part because the production lines were in fixed in place and changing them was not easy once they were all set up. As AGVs are basically programmable smart conveyor belts, this makes them much more adaptable. If production plans need to be altered, then any part involving the AGVs can be rerouted to fit the new plan. In Germany, for example, AGVs have replaced linear production lines with more flexible production lines involving island structures. This not only improves the speed of the output, but it also increases the redundancy factor. If there is a problem at any point in a normal production line, this can cause a massive backlog and huge delays. But using AGVs and the island methodology, such problems are isolated and do not cause major problems for the rest of the production. The production of any vehicle, or any product for that matter, will always encounter unforeseen problems no matter how well it's planned. And on top of that, it is almost always possible to find small ways to improve the efficiency of any production line with the right data. And this is what Industry 4.0 is all about. And this flexible approach is especially important for startups that are trying to create something new. Optera also signed deals with Alafe for the in-wheel motor supply, no surprises there, and they also signed a deal with the Izaki to supply electrical connectors, basically allowing Laptera to lock down and finalize various parts of the design ready for production. And let me tell you from experience, this is much more important than it sounds. I've lost count of how many projects I've been involved with where the design decisions were delayed, causing major problems. By locking down the manufacturer and the components, they can then move forward with all the other components and parts that are connected to these elements. They are no longer playing around with 50 variables, they are making choices and focusing on production, and that is a major sign of experience and wisdom from the leaders. Aptera also further refined the body shape of their vehicle, making it even more aerodynamic by extending the tapers out of the trailing edges, reducing the turbulence even more. And if it looks anything like these pictures by the time it's finished, it is going to look stunning. Next up, I just briefly wanted to mention the recent FUD. There seems to have been in the media recently due to the dip in stock prices that could be causing problems for some technology startups. Will this affect Aptera? In short, probably not. Aptera only requires around 50 million USD to completely fund its first production runs, which in automotive terms is practically nothing, and it is just completing its latest funding round, which will almost completely cover that funding. Aside from that, Aptera is not a public company, so its share prices are not affected by the stock market, unlike Sono Motors, for example, which is listed. This is good news for Aptera as it makes the financials very predictable and much easier to manage. Again, a wise strategy for a startup. Going public too quickly can create a flood of money, which is great, but it can also cause planning nightmares if that pool of money suddenly starts to shrink. Lastly, in a couple of days on June 9th, Lightyear will be presenting their final design for the Lightyear One. They're calling the presentation Bright Horizon, the global premiere of the first solar car. Hopefully, we will get some full release specs and some future plans thrown in. That's it for now. As always, if you're looking to reserve an Aptera, please use the link below. It will save you $30 on the reservation fee, which is totally refundable, and it will help out the channel a lot. Don't forget to like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.